no one should be arrested before an investigation is done. If the investigation is not done, leave people alone and continue with your investigation. And when you have the evidence, you arrest. Then bond. Ten hours you arrest, 14 hours bond. Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Savage. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mutatim Pundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. And Madam Speaker, these changes are good for the accused. These changes are good for society, for the prosecutors as well, because we need to discharge these cases quickly but fairly. I want to repeat, Madam Speaker, what I've said several times. No one should be arrested before an investigation is done. If the investigation is not done, leave people alone and continue with your investigation. And when you have the evidence, you arrest, then bond. 10 hours you arrest, 14 hours bond. <laughs> Madam Speaker, if the matter is not bondable, 10 hours you arrest, 1430 you are in court, and bail must be granted. I said that already. This is not a joke. This is serious. And then prosecute quickly. And we get on with our lives. Thank you. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, to improve access to public services for our people, the government has continued implementing the Digital Transformation Initiative. The Digital Transformation Initiative has minimized face-to-face -face interaction with service providers. This has reduced the risk of corruption in the delivery of public services. So far, 300 public services are being accessed on the ZAM portal, also referred to as the government service bus. Using the ZAM portal, for instance, the Ministry of Lands has now started issuing title deeds. To be specific, 39,691 title deeds, certificates of title, have been issued through this platform. Big change. There are glitches. The effort is to continue to clean up the glitches. Madam Speaker, we've also accelerated digital transformation to enhance service delivery. Decentralization, which for a long time, Madam Speaker, decentralization for a long time remained a mere rhetoric, but is now reality. Is now reality. We are pleased to report that through the decentralization process, some public services with matching resources have been taken closer to the, to the citizens. These include district health services, veterinary services, as well as maritime and pontoon services. Our people are now able to participate 
in decisions that affect their welfare from within their communities, not in Lusaka only. Lusaka is not Zambia. Zambia is not Lusaka. We are all aware that this government has increased the constitu constituents' development fund, as I say, from a paltry 1.6 million per constituents per year to 30.6 million. It's here. It's here. It's real. Let's work hard to utilize this money to benefit those who put us in office across the country. Across the country. To improve the rate of utilization of these funds, we have decentralized the approval of projects from the Ministry of Local Government in Lusaka and Rural Development to provincial administration centers. We urge all members of parliament, you the members of parliament, to work closely with local authorities to ensure timely implementation of projects for the benefit of our people in our country. Madam Speaker, to promote transparency and accountability in the management of public affairs, we enacted the Access to Information Act number 24 of 2023. As you know, this has been sitting around this house for over 20 years. No one had the courage to enact it. This government has done it. This government has done it. The UPND New Dawn administration has walked the talk on this one. We are delivering on our promises. Access to information in our country is now law. It's not just a discussion point. It is now law. Members of parliament, councillors, chairman, council, mayor, sorry, mayors, all of our community, church, traditional, we are committed to working together in our quest to combat the effects of climate change. The current drought is one clear example which we must fight together and win. Of course, irrigation farming, increased productivity, of course, water harvest, approvals for water permits, WAMA, ZEMA, project approvals cannot be business as usual. These must fall in line like yesterday to help us fight this drought. Madam Speaker, to turn this drought from a calamity into an opportunity to change our country forever, to anchor it on irrigation farming for certainty for higher productivity. We can't do this alone, Madam Speaker. We need to do it together to ensure food security, energy security. Two double tragedies, energy security or insecurity, food insecurity, obviously constitute national insecurity. But we shall overcome as we work together in this space. Our efforts, Madam Speaker, to plant 2 million trees by 2028 have gained momentum. Thus far, 645,000 trees have been planted on 538 hectares of land. We need to double, triple, quad our efforts to plant more trees to save the earth for ourselves and our future generations. With these adverse climatic conditions being faced, we call on all our citizens to desist from the habit of destroying nature, grass, trees. Topography, overall, gullies, bad farming habits, following gullies, We need to save human lives, livestock, our crops. When I say livestock, I mean domesticated, Madam Speaker, and those in the wild. It's part of our assets. We call on new members of parliament. We call on traditional leaders, churches, and other stakeholders to join government in sensitizing communities on these negative vices. We wish to commend 
the private sector for supplementing government's efforts by putting in place similar initiatives aimed at combating the effects of climate change. Madam Speaker, carbon trading is a cardinal issue. Carbon trading is cardinal. It's a cardinal issue. And in addressing the effects of climate change as it promotes conservation of forests and forest resource, resources across the globe, carbon trading, carbon market becomes extremely essential. Forests and trees are vital in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Government will work with all stakeholders in, sens in the sensitization on the issues of carbon markets so that our citizens, including members of this August House and traditional leaders and the church, appreciate how carbon markets operate. Yeah. Today, if you talk about carbon markets, people are saying, what is he talking about? So, this government is working to make sure that we can all understand how these markets operate, and your government has now temporarily deceased signing any agreements around carbon markets because we don't want to sign wrong agreements and lock ourselves in. So, the three critical issues. One, what is the market? What is the carbon market? What is the ton of carbon, Madam Speaker? We all need to have a general understanding. Number two, what is the pricing? What is the correct pricing of a ton of carbon? So we don't leave money on the table. Number three, Madam Speaker, the redistribution of economic benefits or resources, all money simply arising from carbon trade. So your government is working very hard, cooperating with international organizations in these three elements. And we are happy that we are making progress in that space. I want to emphasize, Madam Speaker, the communities that protect the carbon assets must be the ones benefiting more so that we can move them away from the negative vices by giving them alternative options. Big keeping, small mining, big mining, legally, correctly. We can move them into activities where funds arising from carbon market trade are directed in their way. That's the message here. Madam Speaker, good agricultural practices play a pivotal role in achieving sustainable development. To this effect, government, in collaboration with our development partners, has, has been promoting climate smart agriculture. We are pleased that so far, 147,412 small scale farmers countrywide are using climate smart agriculture technologies. We need to accelerate the adoption of these technologies to mitigate the impact of climate change. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, as already mentioned, to reduce de dependence on rain-fed agriculture, we are aggressively promoting the development of irrigation schemes for our farmers. Micro, small, medium, large, all together in order for them to produce throughout the year. Last year, Madam Speaker, I attended in Nyimba what we called launch of the planting season. And at that function in Nyimba of Eastern Province, I said, this is the last time I'm doing this because there's nothing called the planting season. We should be planting every month. We should be harvesting every month. So that activity is now redundant. It's monthly, harvest, planting. That's where we should be going. Madam Speaker, we have continued to construct water harvesting facilities, dams, weirs, surface water, underground water, water mapping is where now some of the money in the budget reallocation will go. So we know where the water resources sit. We don't sink, sink bowls anywhere, anyhow. We sink bowls where we know the water is there. So we are not wasteful. So we save money. But we should be able to irrigate as well. Madam Speaker, this is in line with our declaration of the current drought due to El Nino as a national disaster 
and national images. And following this declaration, the, as I said, the 2024 national budget is being reviewed to move resources, Madam Speaker, away from consumption expenditure, habits, bad habits, workshops, perpetual workshops, to meet to talk about the next meeting. No. 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 Money will be moved away from those areas, which we, you, the parliamentarians, had already approved. We are now asking you to revisit that and move money to areas such as water harvest, feeding our people, to start with, Madam Speaker, priorities to feed our people, and then to move into sustainable irrigation-based agriculture with higher productivity levels. That's the core, and we do believe this House will support this budget realignment days ahead from today. In conclusion, Madam Speaker, in the past one year, we continue to make notable progress in the application of our national values and principles. We have been steadfast in the fight against corruption, in the fight against alcohol and substance abuse, in the fight against early marriages, in the fight against gender-based violence. We will continue to institute crime mitigation measures, including, Madam Speaker, gun control. Gun control. We are seeing too much use of guns, excessive use of guns. And the minister responsible has been directed to put controls around there. I guess he has already made a statement on the floor of this house. And it will be accelerated and implemented. I would rather buy a plow than a gun. Our efforts to promote morality and human dignity, to provide adequate sanitation, Madam Speaker, to uphold good governance, as well as to ensure sustainable social economic development, anchored on hard work, Madam Speaker, hard work and not laziness, not queuing for handouts, but working for something in return. You can have what you want. This culture must shift and shift quickly. It slows down our economic re re reconstruction agenda. You see it every day. I see it every day. It became something abnormal to talk about hard work because the normalcy was laziness and the returns, handsome returns out of laziness. How can that be? How can a nation develop on that basis? So, Madam Speaker, I ask this House that we walk together this path of promoting hard work and kicking out laziness from our societies across the country. Accountability, of course. There's no question about that. There's no question about that. I want to say, Madam Speaker, when we do what we are saying, we will reap dividends. No question about it. I simply mean we we'll reap what we plant, what we saw. That is our message here. Let's sow correctly, we we'll reap positive results. We admit, Madam Speaker, that more needs to be done. Whatever we have said today here, more needs to be done. We understand, we acknowledge that, and we need the support of others, including our colleagues from different political parties, religious you know, organizations, global community. Madam Speaker, our national values and principles are critical to national development. As citizens, we have an urgent and compelling duty to fulfill our national values and principles, which should never be sacrificed for anyone and for any reason. For anyone and for any reason. Every one of us, every stand we take 
for morality and ethics, every act of patriotism, every step towards unity, every activity aimed at strengthening the fabric of our nation, our nation, national, nation, in line with our motto of one Zambia, one nation, we see it as an opportunity. Absolutely. One Zambia, one nation, one nation, one people. We see this as an opportunity. We understand our democracy, constitutional democracy. Constitutional democracy. Leaders will come and go. Leaders will come and go. But all leaders must work for the people of Zambia at any time. So, as a nation, and in line with our motto, one Zambia, one nation, one people, every opportunity we, we see, we must use it to promote human dignity and social justice. Every stand must be for good and integrity. Every effort to uphold democracy and constitutionalism assures our nation of the future we aspire to have for us and for our genetic material to come after us. A nation in which we as the Zambian family can raise capable, responsible, decent and successful children and citizens. Madam Speaker, as our country turns 60 on the 24th of October this year, let us all strive to be the best we can be now and into the future. Let us commit to always doing good, to do good for this great nation. To always, to always be good to each other within our democratic dispensation. We must work to do good to each other within our competitive democratic, constitutional democratic dispensation. We can achieve both. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.